class. Welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to learn about how to measure angles. We're going to start with some va basic vocab. First word is going to be an angle. And an angle is formed by two distinct rays. Remember we learned what a ray is in the last couple lessons. So our two distinct rays are going to have a common end point. And that common end point is what we call the vertex of our angle. Now the two rays themselves are going to be the sides. That's a side. And this one's a side. All right. And that's what makes up the basic angle. Now to name the angle, we're going to need to put some points on our angle itself. So here I can have a point just on the vertex. Let's call it S point S. And here I can name an angle simply by just uh, naming the point. So we're going to make an angle symbol, which looks like this, and put an S next to it. Another way to name the angle, especially if we have more than one angle at the same vertex, for example, if I have more than two rays like this, and I have an S for my vertex, I can't simply name that angle angle S because I don't know which angle I'm looking at exactly. There's two different angles here. So we're going to need to use a couple other points. We can put a T here, a V, and a W. And I can name these angles, and let me color code here. Let's put this at, we'll call it the red angle, and then we'll have the green angle. All right, our red angle, I can name with the three points as long as the vertex point is in the middle of our angle. So it'd be angle TSV. Or I can have angle VST. We can go either direction, forward or backward, as long as that vertex point is in the middle. All right, so that's how to name an angle. Uh, next vocab term we have here is a right angle, which is an angle that's exactly 90 degrees. So here, if I'm drawing a right angle at exactly 90 degrees, a lot of the time it's going to have this little symbol, a little box symbol to indicate that it is 90 degrees. And we'll call that, let's just put ABC here, and I can name this angle B using just the vertex angle because there's no other angle connected to that vertex. Or I can name it angle ABC, or I can name it angle CBA. So lots of different ways to name the angle, just make sure that vertex point is in the middle. Next word, we have an acute angle, which is an angle in between zero and 90 degrees. It can't equal zero, or there would be no angle, and it can't equal 90 because then it would be a right angle. So an acute angle is going to look something like this. So something less than 90, we could call it 70 degrees, would be an acute angle. Um, and again, naming that angle, we can just name it angle A if it just gives us that vertex point, or we could use more points if we're given it. An obtuse angle is going to be larger than 90, but less than 180. So it's going to look something like this angle, this whole thing here. So remember, 90 degrees would be perpendicular, which, which if you don't know that term, you'll learn that later. Um, and then if we extend that angle larger than 90, but not quite 180, that's where we get this. So this would be, I don't know, like 150 degrees. I'm just eyeballing it. All right, and we'll put an M there. Why not? We'll name it angle M. All right, and our last vocab word on this page is going to be a straight angle. And a straight angle is exactly what you think it's going to be. It's just a straight line. The angle goes all the way from one side to the next. It's exactly 180 degrees. Um, we'll call it angle V. All right. Next page, we have two more terms and then a little bit of an example there. So congruent angles, we learned the term congruent in a couple lessons before this one. Congruent means, in a sense, that they have the same measure, they're equal. 
but we're talking about objects like angles. So angles, when they're congruent angles, they're gonna have the same measure. For example, if I have two angles here, I have this angle, we'll go A, B, C, and D. We'll put all of our points there so we can look at the individual angles. If I have angle A, B, C, which is this one, and I'm gonna mark it with a little arc, and then angle C, B, D, and I'm gonna mark it with a matching arc. If the arcs match, that's one way to indicate that they have the same measure. So I can mark here that angle A, B, C is congruent to angle C, B, D. All right, we might also be given two angles like this, and this one has, oops, let me draw this a little differently here. Make it a little bigger. Let's say that they were both 20 degrees, 20 degrees. We know that those angles would be congruent because they have the same measure. All right, last one. We have angle addition postulate. It's very similar to the segment addition postulate, which we learned a couple lessons ago, um, but this one deals with angles. So in our angle addition postulate, if I have an angle AOC, so let's draw an angle AOC. A, let me put some points here. So A, O, and C, all right. And then let's put a point B inside our angle, on the interior of our angle. If we draw a ray connecting A, and, or sorry, O, the vertex, and going through B, we end up with two angles here. But if I take angle AOB here and I add it to angle BOC, I get the whole angle. Just because I split it up doesn't mean that angle AOC has changed. So that little equation here, measure of angle AOB plus the measure of angle BOC equals the measure of AOC is what our angle addition postulate is. All right, let's close this lesson with a little bit of an example. We're gonna put a few things together here. We're given that angle DEF is a straight angle, so there's one term that we learned. We're gonna to need to use that information. They want us to find the measure of DEC and CEF, so they want us to find each one of those separate angles. So we're actually gonna use straight angle, which we remember is 180 degrees, and we're gonna use our angle addition postulate here. So our angle addition postulate says I can take this part, oops, you know what, before I make my equation, let's actually write this out. The measure of angle DEC plus the measure of angle CEF has to equal the measure of angle uh, DEF. That's our angle addition postulate. Now I can take the parts that I know and substitute them in. I know the measure of angle DEC is 11x minus 12. And I know the measure of angle CEF, because it's on my graph, is 2x plus 10. I also know that it gave me the information that DEF is a straight angle, so I know that the measure is 180 degrees. So here's my equation. Now I can solve for x and then find the measures of those angles. We have 11x plus 2x gives us 13x. Negative 12 plus 10 is a negative 2 equals 180. We can add our 2 to the other side. Move it up here. 13x is going to be 182. And then we can divide by 13 on either side. And let's see what that's going to be. If we don't have a calculator, we can always work this out by hand. 52 goes into 13 four times. Um, double check. Yep, that works out. All right, so we end up with x is 14. Now, before we box anything, we're not done here. We need to find the measures of those two angles. So we're going to plug that back in to each one of our equations. So 11 times 14 minus 12 is going to give me that angle over there. 
So let's find this. 11 times 14 is going to be, well, let's work this out. I'm going to show you a little trick here. 11 is 10 plus 1. 14 is 10 plus 4. And then I'm actually going to FOIL. Here I've got 100. I have 40, 10, and 4. And if this is confusing to you, you can multiply any way you want. I just really like this method. I get 154. So now I have 154 minus 12. 154 minus 12 gives me 142. All right, so I know that this one is 142 degrees. And then let me make myself some room here. Oops. <laughs> All right, and then let's do the next one. 2 times 14 plus 10 is going to be 28 plus 10, which is 38. And remember, those two angles together need to add to 180. So let's just check our work really quick. Let's add those together. Make sure that it gives us 180 degrees. 10, carry the 1, and we get 180 degrees, which means our problem is correct. So we have... 100 and, oops, not 180. We have 38 for this angle over here. So if we want to write out our answers and box them, let's do that right over here. The measure of angle DEC is going to be 142 degrees, and the measure of angle CEF is going to be 38 degrees. All right, and that concludes our lesson for today. Thanks for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.